This is Dan Seifert with MobileBurn.com, and this is a look at the HTC Evo 4G LTE for Sprint. The HTC Evo 4G LTE is the successor to the very popular Evo 4G and Evo 3D smartphones for Sprint. Based on the hardware found on the HTC One X, the Evo 4G LTE features a unique design that makes it unmistakably an Evo phone. Front and center is the same 4.7 inch 720p Super LCD 2 display that is found on the One X. It looks just as good on the Evo 4G LTE as it does on the One X, with tremendous resolution, great viewing angles, and accurate color reproduction. It's pretty safe to say that the display on these HTC devices is the best one available on smartphones today. It's really that good. Above the display is the earpiece, which hides an LED light for notifications and a 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera. Below it are the same capacitive keys for back, home, and multitasking that we saw on the One X and the One S. The chassis of the Evo 4G LTE is really where, where it makes its own name for itself and pulls away from the One X. Instead of a single-piece polycarbonate body, the Evo has an aluminum unibody and removable panel for access to a micro SD card slot. When I first got my hands on the Evo, I wasn't a big fan of its design, but the looks have really grown on me during my review period, and I'm quite fond of it now. Along the 8.9mm thick side of the phone is a brushed aluminum trim that looks distinctive and attractive. It houses an aluminum power sleep unlock key and dual stage shutter key, which is one of the best I have ever used. But the volume rocker is comprised of a cheesier, glossier plastic. The back of the phone is probably the most polarizing part of the Evo's industrial design, and some people will love it while others will hate it. The bottom two-thirds of the back is a matte finish aluminum, which feels great and offers grip. This is also where the external speaker is found. Inside of this part is a 2000 mAh battery that easily gave me 15 hours of life with moderately heavy usage, though that could change once the Evo is able to be used on an LTE network. Up top is a glossy plastic housing around an 8 megapixel camera and LED flash, and this is really my least favorite part about the Evo's design. The panel is removable, which gives access to a micro SD card slot, but there is no SIM card access on the Evo. The plastic housing is actually really attractive for fingerprints, so it can get quite dirty quite quickly. Fans of the original Evo 4G from 2010 will be happy to see the return of the kickstand on the Evo 4G LTE, and it's finished in a bright red aluminum. The kickstand is pretty stiff and can be hard to open, but it is strong enough to support the phone from either the right or the left hand side. The only real complaint I have with the hardware just might be its size, just like the One X. The big size of the phone can make it really difficult to use one-handed, and prospective buyers should play with one in their hands while before committing to a purchase. Inside, the Evo 4G LTE is powered by the same 1.5GHz dual-core Snapdragon S4 processor used in AT&T's version of the One X and the HTC One S for T-Mobile. Just like we saw with the other HTC devices, this processor performs like a champ on the Evo 4G LTE. Its benchmarks are the highest we've ever seen, but more importantly, it offers incredible speed in just day-to-day -day tasks. The processor has no trouble navigating the phone's interface, and apps open very quickly without any noticeable lag. 3D games really look great on the Evo 720p display, and I didn't notice any lag or problems while playing most any games. The Evo 4G LTE runs Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich with HTC Sense 4.0 inf interface that we saw on the One X and the One S. Sense4 is greatly improved over older versions of the interface, and it's much snappier and more attractive than before. The interface doesn't prevent, present any challenge for the Evo's S4 processor, and Sense4 does offer a nice out-of-the-box experience for new Android users. Purists will likely bemoan the fact that Sense4 doesn't look anything like stock Android, but I don't think many buyers will see that as a problem. As far as included apps are concerned, Sprint has left much of that to HTC, and many of the included apps are part of the Sense suite. The only Sprint apps included out of the box are the carrier's Sprint Zone account management app and visual voicemail apps. The rest of the included apps are either from Google or HTC. The Evo 4G LTE comes with HTC's custom web browser, and it provides a fast browsing experience and support for Adobe Flash Player. It has multiple tabs and the ability to automatically sign into Google's websites once the phone has been set up with a Google account. The browser loads pages very quickly and is smooth when zooming or scrolling, but it does have some odd bugs with intelligent zooming. Since the Evo runs Android 4.0, we would also recommend that buyers check out the very capable Google Chrome beta browser for Android that's available in the Google Play Store.
As one might expect from its name, the EVO 4G LTE has support for LTE service, but Sprint does not yet have a live LTE network. For the time being, users are stuck with Sprint's older, older 3G CDMA network, which provides a much slower browsing and network speeds than competitors like Verizon, AT&T, or even T-Mobile. During my review, most of my tests achieved under 1 megabits per second download speeds, and upload speeds really fared no better. Sprint says that it will launch the LTE service in a handful of markets later this year, but we don't know exactly when, since it hasn't committed to an exact date. The Evo 4G LTE is also the first Sprint smartphone to support HD Voice, which promises to offer much better voice call quality than before. But unfortunately, HD Voice is not yet available from the carrier either, so buyers will still have to deal with standard quality voice calls when they use the 4G LTE. The EVO 4G LTE has the same 8 megapixel camera with backside illuminated sensor and 28mm f2.0 lens as the 1X and the 1S, but it also adds a dual stage hardware shutter key, which is really awesome. The shutter key provides the best feedback for half and full press actions of any smartphone uh, camera key that I've used in recent years, and it really makes the EVO 4G LTE a much more capable camera replacement. The interface for the camera app is the same as the 1 series, and it offers quick access to a variety of shooting modes and filter effects. Autofocus is impressively quick, and there's little to no lag when taking a picture. The EVO 4G LTE can also take bursts of up to 20 pictures at a time, and then choose the best one for you, which is pretty impressive to say the least. Like the other uh, smartphones, the EVO can shoot 1080p video at up to 30 frames per second, and it has the ability to capture full resolution still pictures while shooting. Images captured with the EVO are really impressive in good lighting and outdoors. But indoors and under poor lighting, the EVO's camera struggles more than other smartphone cameras, which is a bit disappointing. Sprint plans to offer the HTC EVO 4G LTE on May 18th for $199.99 with a new two-year contract. If you're married to Sprint, the EVO 4G LTE is the best Android smartphone you can get from the carrier, and I wouldn't hesitate to say buy it right now. But since it yet doesn't yet have access to Sprint's LTE service or its HD voice service, you're investing a bit into the future with this phone, and you'll have to deal with Sprint's subpar 3G network in the meantime. And we don't know exactly for how long that will be. If you have the option to go with another carrier, I would strongly recommend the One X from AT&T, which offers the same screen, camera, and processor, and has access to a speedy LTE network right now. So there you go, that's our look at the HTC EVO 4G LTE for Sprint. This is Dan Seifert with MobileBurn.com. Thanks for watching.